طيب والسبجكت تبعنا اليوم راح يكون ان شاء الله عن اللاست تشابتر ان يونت 4 which is talking about strategic management of uh, innovation uh, طبعا موضوع الانوفيشن وي ستاديد ات بيفور توداي يو ويل سي الكونسنتريشن ار كونسنتريشن ويل بي اون سمثينج ديفرنت ايلس فروم وات وي كونسنتريت اون ديورينج ذا تايم وين وي توك ذا كورس بي 851 يو ويل سي ذا ديفرنس ناو وي ويل لوك تو ذا انوفيشن فروم ستراتيجيك بوينت فيو سو ذا رول اوف ستراتيجيك مانجمنت Uh, the role of strategic management and strategic management in, in innovation is very uh, important. Uh, as we already studied or as we already know by now that innovation we can, uh, typically we can divide the innovation into two broad uh, categories. The first category is the product innovation and the second category is the process uh, innovation. Today we will add something to it. Uh, we will add something as a third category. Uh, we will call it uh, the managerial innovation. And this uh, managerial innovation is uh, actually a, a type or a subtype of the process innovation. But as long as we are in the strategic management course, this is the one that we will be uh, focused uh, on during uh, uh, this chapter. So this is, uh, will be our main focus uh, today, the main focus of uh, our lecture uh, today. So uh, we can consider it as the most wide type of innovation in strategic management, which is uh, basically we can define it in basic words as the invention of a new management practices, which is that's what we do in, st in strategic management. We talked uh, last lecture about the change and we said strategic management uh, is, is, is a change process. And as long as we are talking about the change of process, it means that we uh, will uh, be uh, forced, sometimes even forced to invent a new way to manage our businesses or to manage our processes uh, in, in the business. In this chapter, we will look uh, quickly uh, to the definition of product, uh, product innovation and the process innovation. Uh, we will identify some of the obstacles or, uh, to innovation, some of them. Uh, I will mean some of the major obstacles, not all of them. So you could read from the previous course uh, that we took or you could read from anywhere and you could come up with more obstacles to innovation. Uh, we want to distinguish some of the organizational characteristics that encourage innovation, uh, which is that something uh, basically we want to answer the question why some uh, organizations are innovative and some organizations are uh, not. Uh, we will uh, uh, be introduced to a new uh, term. Uh, we will be introduced to a new term in uh, innovation or in managing the innovation, which is called the, the uh, holocracy. holocracy. Uh, we will examine Uh, some of the context uh, dimensions and its role in uh, uh, the strategic uh, management of uh, innovation. Now we will start by uh, first defining the first broad two categories of uh, innovation, the product, uh, the product uh, innovation and the process innovation. Before that, we will uh, again go uh, quickly over what is uh, uh, the innovation or what we mean by innovation. So innovation broadly or generally we can define innovation as a conversion of a new knowledge into new product process or a service and putting uh, of this new product or uh, process or a service into actual use, which is that something not different uh, uh, from the definitions that we took before or the definition that we know about innovation. What we mean by putting it into an actual use, it means that uh, uh, it mean uh, if we could just put a line under uh, actual use, the actual uh, use, it means that we can commercialize it, which means there is a demand for it in the market. There is uh, customers that uh, they will buy it or we can turn it into what we used to call into viable uh, business. So we have to come in the innovation. We have to convert what we know, uh, uh, what what uh, uh, we know of knowledge. We have to 
convert it into either products, uh, services, processes, uh, new management uh, systems like uh, the managerial innovation, and we have to put it in use uh, in a meaning that we uh, have to be able to uh, commercialize it. The two broad uh, types of organizational inno innovation, we start with the product, uh, product, uh, product innovation, which relates to the final product or service to be sold, especially with regard to the feature. Uh, it includes introduction of a new model, for example, of a car or launch uh, a new saving product by a bank are examples that all, all of these are examples of product innovation, which means we use our knowledge to produce uh, a totally new product or to introduce a totally new uh, service. As an example on the products, uh, we may uh, produce a new car model like the, the cars that uh, now uh, available in the market, the new cars that uh, uh, self-driving self cars, for example, or producing some kind in the service, sec in the service sector, producing some kind of uh, services like new type of accounts. For example, we could have a saving account or some banks uh, invented already some saving accounts that you could start with it and you could start saving money for uh, your uh, kids whenever they uh, uh, come to the age that they want to go to college, for example. A uh, big example or one of the biggest uh, organizations that we know that they use or they are dependent on the uh, product innovation are, uh, we could mention Apple as an organization. They always have some innovation regarding to uh, introducing new products and new Apple products, whether they are phones or uh, tablets or computers or uh, any of uh, their uh, products. They always have a new uh, products. They are a big example about uh, the uh, product innovation. Uh, the second type, the second broad type of innovation is the process innovation, which is uh, relates to the implementation of a new uh, processes according to which the product is produced and uh, distributed, which meaning the innovation or the use of the knowledge that we accumulate over the year, the ex the or our, uh, the experience that we you know uh, over the year, we are using it to improve the process or to come up with the new processes to run our uh, businesses. For example, we have one of the biggest organizations that depend on the process innovation is the Dell. Then we know what Dell, uh, uh, what Dell does in its business model. Built to order, for example. They could be, uh, if you want to order uh, uh, a laptop, for example, you could call uh, the customer service, uh, Dell customer service. You could go uh, through uh, the details of the laptop, the features that you want in your laptop, and they will build it according to what you uh, want and the price of each customers will be accordingly uh, different. Uh, they will build it in, in a fast, in, in a fast, they have speed uh, uh, in building the, the laptop that you built it yourself, then they will deliver it to your, uh, to your house. So look here, it's not, the idea is not about inventing or bringing uh, a new product. It's more about the process that you will, uh, the process that you will get your uh, laptop. Some of the strategies, now we will start with some of the strategies that uh, organization uh, or organization in general, uh, they use to exploit and stimulate uh, innovation. Uh, we have to note that companies that invented new products and processes are not always be able to strategically exploit them. Uh, as an example, you will see that the first uh, organization of the first company that invented the flash memory that we use, all of us we use, it was Toshiba. But who commercialized the, uh, uh, the flash memory? It was Samsung and Intel. They were able to exploit and they were able to capitalize over what Toshiba invented, uh, uh, invented uh, in the first place, not Toshiba. Another example that we have Sony. Uh, Sony, they invented the ebook reader. But who capitalized on the ebook uh, or the digital re reader? It was Amazon, not uh, not Sony. Some of the companies, what uh, they mean by this sentence, it's not sometimes you invent something and 
uh, you are not able to exploit it in the right way. You are not able to, you will not be able as an organization to spread it all over uh, the world, for example, and to capitalize on what you uh, gain. Uh, according to our textbook, they are saying this is some kind, we could consider it some kind of uh, failure. Uh, because if you invent something, you should be the one who capitalize on uh, your invention and make all uh, the profit, uh, all the profits from uh, this invention. Some of the reasons that uh, are discussed in our uh, textbook, why those organizations cannot exploit, uh, cannot exploit or cannot spread their uh, innovation. Uh, one of the first reasons they are saying maybe the organization is unable to protect is its intellectual property. Uh, which means that they invent uh, new products or they invent a new, uh, uh, they invent a new new products, but those products are not protected. They do not have intellectual property on it. And we see in our life many of the examples of new, especially the technological products that uh, get invented in uh, United States, for example, or in UK. And you find after a week or two weeks, you find something made in, in Taiwan or made in, in China. They still the intellectual, they steal the intellectual uh, property. And that's because there are no uh, strict rules in those uh, countries uh, that protect the intellectual properties of uh, others. One of the second, uh, one of the other reasons why those, why some of the companies fail, they are saying that the organization lacks important complementary resources needed to develop, manufacture, market, or distribute the innovation. We may have inside uh, the organization who originally uh, came up with a new vintage, they may not have the necessary uh, resources. They may, they may not have the logistics. They may not have the uh, supply chain to supply it all over the world, for example, to distribute it and let it reach uh, all over uh, the world. Or even sometimes in, uh, if they are working in a big country in, in the country that they are uh, in. Sometimes the reason uh, might be well, that's a special case. Your reason number three, special case for the uh, software company. Sometimes it's hard uh, for a new company to come up with uh, a software, and this software will be uh, adapted by other manufacturers. For example, like the Android now. Android as a software. If you mean any company in the world will come up with a new software that is similar or better than Android. Uh, you will not, unless you are famous and uh, you are a big company and uh, you have a reputation, uh, the people in the market, they will not follow your lead and turn themselves to a software or to application other than uh, the Android. Sometimes one of the big reasons actually for the failures of innovation, sometimes there is no market, no demand no demand in uh, the market. So we are, uh, we may come up with a new products and services, but in the market that we are operating in, there is no demand on those products or, uh, uh, or services. Are we clear until now? Yes, doctor. We want to explain it to others. Are, can you hear me well? And are we clear? Any questions? Do you have any questions? Just raise your hand, please. OK, uh, we will go back to, I think, chapter two or chapter three when we uh, discussed the models of internal analysis and we took one of the models, the VRIO. We could explain the failure uh, or uh, in another way, in an alternative way. We could uh, uh, explain the failure of those organizations using the VRIO model. So you may be as owner, you may be as an organization, you may have resources and capabilities and your resources are valuable. You remember this, the, the test that we used to make with this, uh, uh, with this model, right? We have to test for if the resource and capability are valuable. So we may check that. We may put a check mark beside uh, this test. We may have uh, resources and those resources are valuable. We may also check that those resources are there, rare, which means unique. Uh, nobody or no one in your field, uh, uh, no one has uh, those resources. And you may have those difficult, uh, uh, those resources and capabilities, they may be uh, difficult to imitate. The problem, if you remember when we uh, discussed this model, 
uh, I said the fourth test is the organization part. We may not have uh, an organization. We may not be as an organization organized uh, st from strategic point uh, around our resources to be able to exploit uh, those uh, resources and uh, capability. And here, this is uh, this part is an important part, the organization part. So we are as an organization not ready to exploit or not ready to spread our uh, innovation. We do not have the, sometimes the human capabilities. We may have problems and uh, financial problems. For example, we are uh, have, for example, a deficiency in our financial uh, re resources that we cannot uh, go to uh, uh, all the markets or to the major markets where we can market our products. Sometimes we have uh, talent problem. We have a problem that we do not have people who could market our uh, products or services, the product, the innovative products and services that we uh, uh, invented inside our uh, uh, organization. Sometimes our problem will be uh, uh, somewhere on the supply chain where, uh, where we have our supply chain with sometimes with the suppliers, the vendors, or we don't have showrooms. So the point of the organization is very important point. Uh, even if we look to this uh, model, we have to consider it one of the major one of the major point that either it could make us successful in the organization or uh, we could be uh, failure, even failure with having uh, the other three components, the valuable and rare and the difficult to uh, to imitate. So your job as uh, someone uh, who will be a chief strategist or uh, a strategic manager, it's your job to design, to make a design for the organization structure that you are in. You have to design the culture and you have to design the processes in a way uh, that you create good conditions for your organization to uh, succeed and for any innovation inside your organization to be exploited uh, worldwide. In addition to that, you have to uh, uh, come up as a strategic manager. You have to come up with a creative activities. Uh, creative activities, it means that you have to change the day to day business. You have to uh, uh, capitalize or make good utilization of the technical expertise uh, that you have inside the organization and to integrate it with uh, whatever technology, whatever uh, technology, uh, whatever technological uh, aid that you can get. Uh, plus, as as a strategic manager, you have to create good conditions uh, in the production, in the marketing, in the finance, in the distribution, and in the customer support. Look to to all those activities. They are uh, uh, sometimes easy to say more than done. It's easy to say it, but it's hard when you uh, want to apply it in uh, the real world. Even big companies they could not manage all uh, uh, all those activities. Uh, as an example, you could see one of the examples. They have examples in your textbook uh, about Google. We know how big is Google, or how much uh, resources they have, and how much resources they can spend. Uh, and still, they have a problem in making integration, uh, uh, making integration between uh, the various those various uh, components. And that's why you will see uh, Google, even Google sometimes uh, they uh, buy uh, existed. Uh, businesses ex existed successful businesses and sometimes they use a uh, third party to market uh, uh, their products and their uh, services. So uh, yeah, I mean, the point from uh, this slide that we have to remember that the VRIO is one of the strategic model that uh, it could explain sometimes why uh, some companies, uh, why some companies or why some organization, even though they have valuable resources, they have rare resources and they have uh, uh, the dimension of difficult to imitate, difficult to copy or imitate, uh, they fail to uh, exploit their uh, innovations. Now, uh, subject in the textbook, they are uh, uh, discussing or we will discuss uh, how established companies can structure their operations to stimulate innovation. So you are in an existing organization. How can you, what can you do to stimulate the innovation? What 
uh, what you have to change or how can you deal with uh, an existing organization condition and how can you make this uh, organization uh, as a successful uh, uh, successful successful in uh, exploiting uh, the innovation uh, in the world so uh, in this section, they are giving us uh, five strategies that you could use as a strategic manager or as a general manager, even inside the organ inside an established organization that you could use it to stimulate uh, innovation. Note that those five, it could be used uh, individually or separately, and we could even combine between them. We could have integration or combination between more than one of those strategies. It depends how much resources and uh, how much expertise and uh, experience and expertise you have in uh, in the management field. The first strategy to uh, uh, that we could use it to stimulate innovation is uh, uh, called the product champions. What we mean the, uh, by the product champion are the individual with the creative ideas who are allowed to lead teams and develop new ideas. They tend to have a greater ability to overcome resistance in the organization and generate enthusiasm that attracts the involvement of others. That's whenever we see inside the organization, some people, they are, we call them product champions. They come up with uh, creative ideas and new ideas. We can, you can, as a strategic manager, put this person as a leader. A leader, he would be a champion, uh, uh, a leader, a product champion, a leader for uh, the team to produce the, this product or to uh, introduce uh, the service, the creative service that he uh, came up with. This person, he will be motivated and he will come up any resistance or any challenge that will uh, come in his way. He will generate enthusiasm. Uh, between the other employees in the organization, he will choose his team and he will uh, attract uh, other people to work with him. That's one of the strategies that we could use to stimulate innovation, to encourage innovation inside organization. Uh, uh, the uh, second strategy is to build a corporate incubator. We have incubators, that's one of the subjects that we I think we did uh, a TMA about it, the incubator, which is uh, basically the incubator is a business unit. Uh, it is established to fund and nurture a new business based on, uh, upon capabilities and technologies that have currently limited application within the uh, company established business. So it's, it's a kind of a separate unit. Uh, this separate unit uh, it can fund the new uh, ideas. So whoever get an idea, the idea get uh, uh, analyzed, studied. Uh, uh, they make visibility study on this idea and it turn to the incubator. So that they start inside the incubator and it get funded in the uh, incubator. A third strategy, which is uh, strictly used by some of the technological uh, technology organization or uh, specifically like in Silicon Valley in the USA, they call it listening post or innovation research center, which is uh, a center or a unit uh, inside the organization. The main task of this uh, unit or, or, or the main task of this unit or slash center is to deduct the new research results and new innovation and, and new partners normally established in foreigner in a foreign innovator uh, cluster to collect information on the spot, which is like a center. This center will, it's, it's from the name, it's a listening post, so it will record the feedback from uh, the customers in uh, international markets. They take their feedback, their suggestions. Uh, your partner, if they have partner, if they have uh, alliances or partners, they will take their feedback and they will uh, take it back to the organization and the organization will start working on uh, what uh, exactly the markets need or what the customers are need or what your uh, alliances uh, need in, in foreign countries. This is one of the way or one of the strategies that we could use to stimulate, to start thinking about, uh, uh, start thinking about uh, new products uh, and the new services. The fourth strategy is the fourth strategy is the strategic alliance, uh, alliances or the partnership, which is kind of uh, alternative way uh, to develop uh, uh, innovations in house, which means that we can uh, learn 
from our partners. We can acquire uh, capabilities uh, or the technical know-how from uh, our strategic uh, partners. We can jointly work together away from our uh, established business. We could work with our uh, partners. Uh, the fifth strategy, which is the most uh, popular method of uh, innovation of strategies to stimulate innovation, is they call it. It's called the uh, the open innovation. In open innovation, it involves the development of innovative products or processes by opening up the, in the innovation process to interested external actors and uh, uh, innovation takes place across organizational uh, boundaries and uh, the development process is open to variety of individuals and organizations, which means that we have an open policy for innovation. Anyone uh, could come up with a new idea. Uh, uh, we could follow this idea and we could support those uh, individuals. This is one of the most uh, uh, popular methods uh, that organizations are uh, using, the which when, when, even when I said the organizations are used, the, innovator, uh, the innovative organizations are used. Uh, they let their uh, uh, employees suggest, they take the suggestions of their employees, their customers, uh, their partners, and they work on, uh, on them. Why it's popular? Because like if you look to uh, number four, for example, when we say the strategic alliance or partnership and we want to work uh, away from our house and we want to work with our uh, partners, there is a risk. There is usually high risk. Maybe the partners, if they see there is a potential for success for this new product, they may claim it uh, to, uh, to, 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 to their own self. We maybe lose. Uh, what we invest in our uh, with our uh, partners. So this open innovation, at least we keep the innovation in, in, in our house. Or even if you look to any one of the previous methods, you will see that there are uh, risks in each one of them. Uh, the most, uh, the wider one or the most popular method is the open innovation. Uh, note that the open innovation could be used in conjunction with business incubators. We could have incubator inside our uh, business, so we could use the uh, both of uh, the method. As alternative way to those five strategies, another way to keep you innovative and to keep you uh, uh, introducing new products, uh, new innovative products and services, you could buy from other organizations. You could purchase uh, innovation. This is kind of uh, common in some uh, industries or in some fields. For example, in, in pharmaceutical, in the pharmaceutical industry, this is something of the uh, uh, most popular uh, ways that uh, big uh, uh, organization in the pharmaceutical industries they buy, uh, uh, they buy medicines or they buy uh, they buy things from small organization. If I could recall with you, I forget the name of the two people. Look now, even all of us, even was it, it was this example, it was one of the most important things that passes through our uh, lives recently. Remember when we had Corona, right? We had right. Corona and everyone was, was looking to what we were, everyone looking for. Uh, how can we come up with? Uh, treatment for uh, for Corona. Does any uh, do any one of you remember who invented the vaccine? Who invented the vaccine? Mm -hmm. uh, Pfizer and Pfizer. Uh, Pfizer. Who is the company? Who is the doctor Sinopharm? Sini. Sinopharm, في Pfizer, في Johnson and Johnson. الألباني شو اسمه هذا نسيت. Johnson أمريكي صح دكتور كان. Yes. Uh -huh. في نوع بريطاني نسيت اسمه. نوع بريطاني نسينا أسترازينيكا. أسترازينيكا. أم. You see, I asked him. So you mentioned the uh, the name of the big organization. Originally, who invented it? Pfizer, it was invented by it was invented by whom? By 
a man, a far, uh, a man and his wife, right? Yes, a Turkish a guy. A Turkish, Turkish guy and his wife. Look, no one mentioned him. But no, why uh, they both? Look, Visor, this is one of the strategies in the uh, one of the strategies that pharmaceutical uh, industries use. Visor originally they bought it from this Turkish guy and his wife, and after that the vaccine uh, took or it started taking the name of Visor uh, vaccine. Originally it was not for uh, from Visor. Visor they failed to uh, come up with a vaccine. Who came up with the vaccine? The Turkish guy and. We don't know actually. We do not know. I don't know myself. Maybe all other, uh, all the other vaccines are the same way. It was invented by small, uh, small labs inside small labs inside uh, inside small labs, and it was invented inside small labs by unknown people, and it was sold to those companies. So this kind of stimulating innovation and to come up with innovative products and services, pharmaceutical use it and they buy it. But in other industries, it's hard. If you invent something, it will be hard for you to share it or to sell it to someone else. You want the whole, uh, you want the whole buy, you want the, uh, everything from uh, whatever can pro uh, profit from this uh, product. That's why you will be forced to use the five strategies. But alternatively, in some uh, software, for example, even the software uh, software industry, they use the same way. They could buy it from you. Tarek, uh, for example, he uh, developed or he worked on a new software, uh, working on something. You will find maybe Google or Apple or someone will buy it from him. Tarek by himself, he cannot. Maybe if he introduced it himself, Either he will not have enough resources, or even when he come up with uh, uh, this uh, innovation, no one will uh, pay him any attention. But if he sold it to Google or Apple, Tarek name is gone, and Google or Apple, uh, Apple will take uh, will take the lead and 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 commercializing the product, the service, or uh, the item. Are we clear until now? Yes. Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Okay. So now again, we will talk about uh, or we will discuss the uh, importance of the business model innovation. We took the business model, right? We took the business model without the word innovation. Any one of you remember what does in in simple word? What does business model uh, mean? What do we mean when we say? Uh, business model. Simple words. What is business model? We have to achieve the value and the profit for the business. Someone came up with the, uh, something clear, more clear than what do we mean by business model? Framework, infrastructure uh, of the framework for what? Framework of the business operation. And this. Uh, no, we got nothing to do with operation. Framework yes. explain what? It explains something. Um, yes. Explains how the organization makes money. Okay. This is the business model. Business model, it means a model or a framework. It shows directly when you uh, read about it, when you see it, you will know how this organization makes money. Right? So it will show you the costs of the organization, the revenues of the organization, and what are or how much the profits, how much profits can you make out of this uh, business. Isn't it? In, Assemble words. And we took, uh, I think, four or five different types of business model. You remember razor and blade. You remember different types that we studied it in, I think, chapter two, three. Yes. So this is one of the things. Concentrate on those uh, models, the business models. Concentrate on them, please. You have to know each type. What does it mean? 
uh, different categories of different types or categories of business models and the example on each one of them, which is I think I made you uh, separate slides for them and each model. There is an example on it. It's example explain the business. It explain the business uh, model. We have to note uh, when we are talking about innovation, as um, I used to say all the time, that do not always connect innovation to technology. Not all innovations are connected to technology, and not all innovations that we see. Uh, technology has part of it, or the main thing that why we consider this is an innovation because there is uh, 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 an advanced technology involved in this uh, product or in this service. Some of the or some of uh, some or most of the innovations are not even uh, related to technology, as uh, we say about improving the value chain of the organization. You improve the value chain of your organization, which means you are trying to make your uh, processes uh, better than your competitors. Better, it means it, you will save costs. At the end, as a result, you will generate more, uh, more income or more uh, profits. So innovators, we can say, or what we see now when we are dependent on the technology, yes, but not all the time. Sometimes we need to change our way of doing things. The innovation will be basically is changing the way that you are practicing day to day business. If you make it better than others, if you invent new ways to do your business or to deliver your products and services, that by itself will be an innovation. You will be different from others. You will uh, uh, produce more, you will save the cost, and at the end you will be making more money, more money or more profits than your uh, rivals in the markets. You remember last lecture we talked, I think, about Netflix, right? We talked about Netflix, we talked about Nokia, we talked about IKEA, and as an example, how they resist the change or they did not want, they were unwilling to change the way that they are operating. And we took in the example of IKEA, how IKEA when they saw, uh, IKEA for example, when they saw there is online retailer for uh, furniture, directly they start, uh, they made departments uh, to sell their furniture online. Uh, directly IKEA, they saw that people are going to, for example, downtown to the center of the cities. So, they were able to change the way that they are uh, originally operated in big spaces and they adapted uh, adapted their products and services to a small uh, spaces inside uh, the cities so those are some of the uh, some of the examples that you could uh, see uh, uh, that organization they fail not because uh, they could not buy technology for example just because they were successful, like Blackbuster, for example. Blackbuster, tell for Blackbuster, so you can use the video. Video store, uh, traditional video store. You go to the store, you rent uh, videos. Many years, they were uh, VHS, had many DVDs. You go rent, and you go physically to uh, their places. You find them. They are all over neighborhood, inside any mall, inside any place in the United States. So you go, you rent, and after you're done watching uh, the movie, you return it and you take. That's their business model. That's how they make uh, their money. La Netflix, they came and they started earlier, much. Yani they started at the same time with the Black Buster. But Netflix, they were smarter. They saw that people uh, do not want to waste uh, their time going to choose uh, inside the store or to drive to the stores. So Netflix originally they uh, changed their way of uh, their way of making money or their way or their business model, and they start delivering for the customers using the mail. So they used to deliver uh, movies in the mail. And whenever they send you, uh, 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 they send you uh, uh, with their delivery, they send you something. When you want to send it back, you send it in the same envelope. They send you envelope to return those, uh, to return those, uh, to, to return what you bought from uh, the videos. Netflix. After that, when we came to the technology uh, revolution and the internet, they start putting movies online. They start. Uh, 
you know how Netflix operate now, right? So you pay a monthly subscription, uh, they give you access to the movies, and you pay if you want to watch it now. You so Netflix compared to Blackbuster, they have this business model and they were unwilling to change it, and th that's why they failed. They went out of business. Netflix, they changed their ways. Uh, yes, later on, they uh, uh, took advantage of the technology, but originally they were just in a uh, flexible mind that they changed the way that they are handling this uh, their business. The same way that IKEA did. The same example that we mentioned uh, uh, in the last lecture, Nokia with Apple. Nokia, they were concentrating on, they were the most successful company in, in the world, and they were concentrating on the handset. The type of the handset, the weight of the handset, uh, while when uh, the apps uh, came up, uh, Nokia they refused to uh, put the apps or to adapt the, the apps on their phones. Who took it? Apple. Apple, they became now, it's the number one company in the world. And what happened to Nokia? No more Nokia. Ma'am? So it was. Uh, people unwilling to change. That's why we said last time in the change uh, chapter, in the change uh, management chapter, sometimes it's very hard uh, for successful companies to convince successful companies to change the way that they are operating. They have excuses always that we are successful. We don't have, uh, we do not have uh, the necessity to change. We are successful. Tamam? Hello, at last, Thing in this chapter, which is, I said, the most important part for us, is uh, the managerial uh, innovation. Uh, from a strategic point of view, what do we mean by managerial innovation uh, to start with? It's uh, sometimes they call it administrative or management or organizational uh, innovation, which is, I, uh, uh, as I said uh, in the beginning, it's part of the process innovation which is basically we can define it in a simple uh, words as introduction of a new program or practice uh, pertaining to an organization policy, culture, administrative procedures, management, decision making and external uh, relation. Management, uh, uh, managerial innovation involved much more than creating listening post or uh, appointing a product uh, champ uh, champion. It involves changing the way that organization is managed on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis in some important aspects. So the managerial, uh, managerial innovation is mainly related to how you operate your business day-to-day, uh, -day, how uh, uh, in the basis of day-to-day -day, uh, operation, how can you better in what you uh, are doing in a daily basis? Changing the way that you are handling uh, the material, for example, or changing the, the way that you uh, delivering uh, services, changing the structure of the organization to make it uh, more flexible and to make the decision uh, process uh, faster. Uh, examples on there are actually many examples on the managerial innovation. Uh, one of them is the uh, uh, organization structure that we studied it before in uh, the structure uh, chapter, the M form, uh, the M form or the multi the multi divisional uh, structure, which was originally uh, created by uh, General Motors. That was uh, an invention at that time. Invention, uh, invention in in the field of management to adapt the multi divisional or the M4. Uh, also, we studied last time, I think, last lecture, we studied the uh, uh, balance scorecard. It's a tool, that's a control tool. But as a tool, it's, it's something we call it managerial innovation uh, for the organization who are uh, using this uh, balance scorecard, this uh, tool. So at that time when uh, they, it, it was first introduced, it was considered as a managerial uh, innovation. Some other uh, managerial innovation can be related to changing the structure of uh, the organization. Uh, a lot we see now or what we are seeing now that a lot of organization, especially the a small organization, small to medium organi organization, they uh, do not care too much about the formal uh, structure of the organization. They don't have even some of the organizations, they do not have uh, structures as uh, we will see. They have teams, 
they have self-managed uh, teams. They operate through uh, teams. They have projects, and for each project, they have a team uh, to direct this uh, project. They have no structure at all. Uh, what we call self organ, uh, what we can call those organizations as a self organizations because they are run by teams and those teams are replacing what we know uh, of uh, uh, departments are uh, units. Main reason was to make the organization flexible, flexible, and to move them away from uh, the routine and to uh, uh, resist or to overcome any reason that could stop in front of any organization to be uh, innovative. In those teams, uh, as we will see one uh, of the types, now we will introduce one of them. Those teams usually they are uh, main characteristics of those teams or the main characteristics of self-managed organizations that runs uh, run by teams that those organization, we have the people in the team, they are accountable responsible of, uh, uh, they are accountable and responsible uh, and owners of, uh, they are considered as owners of uh, the project inside the, uh, the organization. So the accountability and responsibility are uh, important things that should be uh, found inside uh, or between the team, uh, the team members. One of the most famous uh, let me say the most famous managerial uh, innovation is uh, the term that is uh, called holocracy. Uh, holocracy in Arabic, it's mean, uh, yeah, the closest meaning to holocracy, it's meaning that when you govern yourself or uh, when the citizens, they govern themselves, like you see a country and there is no government in the, cant in the country. So the people are the people will uh, make uh, a governance for uh, themselves. يعني بالعربي شو بيكون عنها زي الحكم الذاتي. يعني how people they govern their own uh, selves. And uh, this holocracy, uh, لما uh, نطلع عليه as holocracy as uh, as 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 a term, uh, it was one of the managerial uh, innovations. It, what we mean uh, with it inside the organization that we will have a self-managed organization. An organization will be managed without uh, structure. There is no leader for uh, the organization. So there are three characteristics that we could see for uh, the holocracy organization. The first uh, character is that teams are the structure. So there is no organization structures. The, the teams are the structure. The team is the circle, or uh, the, the, the team are the main focus point in uh, 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 this innovation. It replaces, the team will replace all the units and the departments. So in the same team that you are forming, you will have someone in the team will be uh, finance, uh, uh, and second will be marketing, will be sales, but they have, uh, uh, you as a team leader or as a team, you do not have any relation with your organization. You you could uh, finish all what you want to do inside uh, inside the uh, the team. This is one of the first characteristics. So the team is the structure. There is no organizational structure. Number two, the second characteristics in uh, for those teams are the team design are team design and govern themselves, which mean that the teams are. Uh, forming themselves and they uh, have own governance over uh, themselves. So what you do as an or, uh, as organization, as an organization or as uh, 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 owner of the organization or as a general manager for the organization, the only responsibility that you have is to produce rules, regulations, how teams are formed, who should be in the team, the responsibility of the team, the responsibility of the uh, uh, team members, the accountability, and you just monitor those things. You do not have any saying in how the teams are formed, and you cannot even tell the teams what to do. The teams are free to do whatever they are, whatever they want to uh, to do, and they are free to design themselves in any way they find it uh, suitable to uh, execute a certain uh, project. The third uh, uh, part of uh, 
literacy or the third uh, characteristics uh, of those organizations, the literacy organization, leadership is contextual, which in a meaning that is no, uh, there is no fixed leader or there is no permanent leader for the team. So who's the leader of the team? Whoever get uh, the most experience or whoever has the most uh, saying in a certain subject. So if we are a team of five, Sometimes you will find uh, the finance, uh, uh, the guy from the finance, or the, uh, our member from the finance, uh, the one specialized in finance, you will find him leading the team. And the second day you will find uh, the marketing uh, member is uh, the leader of the team. And in the third day you, will, will, you, you might find the uh, uh, member from the team, the research and development uh, uh, as a leader of uh, the team. So there is no fixed leadership. There is no permanent leadership. Leadership, it's it depend on the context. It depend on what we are doing. The only thing that we could uh, uh, do or why we are uh, 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 not concentrating too much on the leader in this type of organization because we have accountability and responsibility. We have rules, clear rules for accountability and clear rules for uh, uh, responsibilities for each of they are accountable and they are responsible of what they are doing. What is the democracy? What is the democracy? In order to connect, إحنا we said previously, يعني we are not contradicting ourselves that innovation cannot be planned, right? Innovation and planning does not go together, right? Right or wrong? Innovation and planning. Uh -huh. Cannot go together. Uh, I we can go together. Innovation and planning. Supposed to go together. Supposed to go. Uh, yani have a logical when they supposed to go together. Uh, Aslan innovation, we are dealing with the uh, uh, illogical things. If we are planning, it's mean shiny innovation. Yani I will come up with something new, something never existed before. Never so planned. So how can you plan for it? You Uncertainty or risk uh, very high. How can you plan for it? Can you plan for it? No, no, I cannot. That's, That's why we leave. We leave. We should build our organization. If we want to be innovative in the holocracy, teams, the teams design themselves. They see what they need. The only thing you want from those uh, team members to be accountable and responsible. They, you, don't want, you do not want them to waste your resource or the organization uh, resources wasted uh, on nothing. They are accountable. They are responsible of what they are doing. At the same time, you are not forcing anyone uh, uh, on the team. They design themselves. They see what they need, who uh, are the person who should be in the team, and they start working. So that's to overcome the, this point, the plan. If we uh, plan it, it means it's a business. It's a traditional business if we if, if we can plan it. But innovation, it's, it's something with high risk. High risk, we don't know what, uh, we do not know the exact results of what we are uh, doing. We hope that we can come up with something new, but it's not guaranteed that we could come up with something new. So planning had a little part in we studied it before, the innovation course and no planning and innovation. There are other ways that we could use it instead of a planning. Planning is used for traditional uh, businesses. Any questions so far? Uh, يعني هذا اللي هلوكراسي من الأشياء اللي نعرف شو يعني هلوكراسي organization. ونعرف الثري مين كاركترستيكس هدول من الناس اللي بيضلوا يسألوا يعني أو الناس اللي بدكم تدرسوا يعني مش الناس اللي بيسألوا هلا اني زعلان مش زعلان بالعكس يعني هذا بخليني مبسوط انه حدا مهتم انه بده يدرس هاي من الأشياء اللي لازم تركز عليها بهذا التشابتر يعني يعني التشابتر هذا I will don't think that someone will ask about product and process innovation المين ثينك إذا بدنا نركز على it's something good to know it and we already know it from previous courses بجوز احنا اكثر شيء وي كونسنتريت مور توداي على المانجيريال انوفيشن وبالمانجيريال انوفيشن وي كيم اب اكروس الهيلوكراسي وي ثري كاركترستكس شود بي ايبل تو اكسبلين ات ان ان ا نايس واي تمام اوكي تمام دكتور
last part of uh, this chapter, or the last section of this chapter, uh, they are uh, textbook. Our textbook uh, is uh, discussing the role of context in innovation. How important the context in uh, in the innovation uh, process. So the first point is uh, they are discussing the type of organization greatly matters for innovation uh, process. And as an example, as long as we know the uh, helocracy now, helocracy organization, uh, they are uh, suggestion that suggestion that helocracy organization is they are saying it's practical when we are in a context of small organization could work in small organization, but in big organization, it's not practical to uh, uh, to use the helocracy, for example, as a model for uh, innovation. Listening posts, for example, uh, may be practical in the context of large multinational companies, but not in other contexts. So the context where you operate the type of organization, the context of the organization is one of the important uh, determinants of uh, your success as innovator. What type of organization are you running? Small organization, big organization, and what field, what sectors are you are uh, working? This is the first point. The second point, they are discussing the national differences, and they saw the national. They are saying the national differences are uh, uh, matter. Also, they are matter the innovation. Uh, again, we studied this part in the whole context. You remember the, the dimensions of context, the six dimensions that we studied it before: in, in cultural, will organizational, will institutional, uh, and that's you know something important to. Uh, to take it into consideration, what type of national culture, for example, we live in? Are we living in a culture that uh, the people, we as a people, we uh, uh, run away from new things, we scale from new things, or are we a culture that we are uh, taking, we, we, we are able or we are uh, uh, motivated always to take a new risk and to try new things. So the culture is something important for the success of uh, innovation, the national, uh, the national differences between people. And that's why uh, some countries are innovative. As a country, we could say the country is innovative, regardless of what they are doing, regardless of the field. And some countries are not innovative. In addition to that, in addition to the type of organization and the national difference, another important uh, point is to uh, remember the uh, some of the contextual uh, factors, which may include uh, the attitudes of senior managers in the organization, the intensity of competition in, uh, in the markets that we are in, and we have always, even though it's the last point, but it's one of the most important point, how much organization resources we have. Sometimes we, you may come and you may invent uh, uh, new products and new services. What uh, one of the big reasons why you may not be uh, uh, successful is that you do not have uh, uh, resources. You do not have especially financial resources, for example. Financial resources to spread your innovation uh, in a wider area to gain more uh, customers, more profits, more revenues. These are some of the or the most important three points that we could look or we could uh, discuss uh, uh, in the subject of uh, the role of context and uh, innovation. Any questions? Start rain. Nam Dictor. Sing clear. Oh, yes, now. Afnan. Maha, the Haini, Tarak. Had I into a stiff sar? Yani had a chapter, uh, one of the most easiest chapters, I think, even though yani I'm not sure if let me say it in Arabic. I'm not sure if 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 I'
سو so, وانت بتقرا في الموست امبورتنت ثينج في اللي هو المانجيريال انوفيشن والهيلوكراسي والثري كاركترستكس ال اول اذر انفورميشن ما اظنش انه في شيء كان شيء اشياء جديده يعني او او اشياء معقده يعني على الاصح 